Hey boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting Outrageous Toy Review. Today, we're here with Mike Matei, and we're looking at the real Ghostbusters toys. And there's Slimer. Slimer. Slimer had his own uh, show after the real Ghostbusters. It was um, Slimer and the real Ghostbusters or something. That was the spinoff show. Um, I don't think that was the actual name of it. I kind of forget. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, this is my real Ghostbusters toy now. There was a lot more real Ghostbusters toys than this. This is a very small selection of, of the figures. However, what's cool is that these are pretty much the main lineup of the original real Ghostbusters toys. And these are pretty hard to get, especially uh, like this. As you can see, the different figures, Ray, Winston, Egon, and Peter, all have their proton packs and all have the full proton beam in unbroken condition. Now, you may easily understand why that's a hard thing to find because as you can see, look how fragile that is. It's just a little, you know, very fragile thing and those can easily break. And usually when you find these figures right about here, these things are broken off with a little, uh, you know, the whole beam is broken off. Now the proton beam, if you don't know anything about Ghostbusters, boys and girls, the proton beam would be shot out from the proton pack to catch the ghosts. And here are the ghosts, and they are pretty cool. The ghosts um, sort of were uh, translucent. You could see through them, and they were very cool figures, almost like a glow-in-the-dark type uh, type of thing. And um, so did each, each guy came with the proton pack, the beam, and the ghost? Yes. Yeah. Um, I believe these are all set up correctly. It's I... uh, Ray Stance, and he was played by Dan Aykroyd. Peter Venkman, played by Bill Murray. Winston Zedmore, played by Ernie Hudson. And Egon Spangler, played by Harold, Harold Ramis. Ramis. Honestly, none of them really look like their characters in the movie, because you know what? This is the real Ghostbusters. This isn't this isn't exactly like the movie. Like, the cartoon sort of made their own versions of the characters of the movie. So, yeah, none of them look... Like, if you watch the movie, do, does Egon have red glasses like that? Does his hair look like that? No. In fact, Egon in the movie, his hair isn't even that color. It's brown. But here it's blonde, you know? So they weren't trying to be totally literal to the actual Ghostbusters movie. But they're fun toys nonetheless. And you know what? I do have to say... In the years since, they've made real Ghostbusters toys that actually look like the characters of the movies. But these are cool because these were the originals. Let's take a look at the Ecto-1 boys and girls. Now, I'm going to clear this off. And I want to show you boys and girls something pretty cool. Pretty cool in terms of a guy who has all these kind of figures. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I'm also going to take this off. I believe that this is... A little bit on the rare side to have that yeah. um, you know it's funny as a kid like this was sitting in a box of toys yeah and like i had the ecto one and you didn't know what that was from. i didn't know what it was from yeah you it's know? Like, oh, is, that, is that is this from he-man like what, yeah, what, what did that exactly. come from right <laughs> yeah. um so what's cool is with a lot of um 80s play sets a lot of things weren't the right size like we were looked at the transformers figures and like ultra magnus was like a little too big compared to the other figures and a lot of stuff like that happened, but what always made me upset about Thundercats was the Thunder Tank comes out of the claw of Cat's Lair, and with the playset, the um, the Thunder Tank was about the same size as the Ecto-1, and it always upset me when I was a kid because in the actual playset of Cat's Lair, you couldn't put the Thunder Tank in the claw because it didn't fit. It was the wrong size. But what's cool about real Ghostbusters is this actually is made to scale. So let me move the containment unit, which should, should not be there. Um, excuse me. This actually fit, boys and girls, into the Ghostbusters firehouse. So look at that. The Ecto-1 actually fits in there. And you can have your guys in the Ecto-1 and actually drive them out of the actual firehouse. 
and I thought that that was so cool that you could actually do that. And that was one of the things that made um, the real Ghostbusters play set so cool, is that it was, it was to scale. Now, do you boys and girls know what this is? It's a containment unit. This was the containment unit, and let's show you how it works. Let's look at how the containment unit worked. So, when the Ghostbusters... When the Ghostbusters would catch the ghosts with their proton packs, and then the ghost would go into the trap, what would you do with the ghost? You'd have to put it into the containment unit. So, into the containment unit they go, and... When the light is green, the trap is clean. The trap is clean. Bada bing, ghost is in there, and Slimer is happy that he doesn't have to be in the containment unit too, because he's a friendly ghost, just like Casper. This is the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, who was the coolest. But now, going back to talking about scale, boys and girls, what is the problem you see with this? He's too small. He's too small. Because the in the movie, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man could step on this building, but he's smaller than the building. Look at the size of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man compared to the size of the building, boys and girls. The building should be about that tall. Another thing we should say about the Ghostbusters Firehouse is that you see the bottom of Egon's feet there with these holes in his feet, you could put Egon onto this um, fire pole I have a question for you yes why on the roof of this yes is there a grid here do you see see the grid yes up there yes and then why is there a grid here what, I, what were you supposed to do if you were to lie Ray in the house and put him right there let's say i think you would put slime on top of there and the slime would come down and you could actually oh i should be using peter because peter gets slimed in the movie but um you would slime the ghostbusters i'm pretty sure that that was yep. for to, to, to slime them it actually came with a jar like this big yeah. of slime and so did if you if you pan the camera over here for a second a lot of the ninja turtle uh toys came with mutagen and uh ninja turtles and real ghostbusters uh, both were big on mutagen and slime, which came in containers, and that was a really fun thing when you were a kid to have all that messy slime. It was like Nickelodeon. They had Gak, too. This is, uh, bad to the bone. He's bad to the bone, and you know what he did? He would capture the Ghostbusters. Let's capture Winston. He's captured! And here we have the real Ghostbusters color form playset. Here you got the characters from the show. You got Slimer, color forms. Does anybody even remember what color forms are? Well, I'll show you, because you need to know. Color forms were one of the coolest, not really, things from the 80s. Um, they were fun. Um, they're not, like, the coolest thing, really, but they're, they were okay, I guess. They were fun things to have. Basically, you'd have a background, and... You'd have these things that weren't quite stickers, they weren't quite magnets, but they were sticky. And you could stick them to the background and move them around. And you could arrange little situations like putting Slimer on the couch and putting Winston right here. And Winston could catch Slimer with his proton beam. Or Egon could try to capture this ghost. And you can make up any sort of situation that you want. And that was color forms. Fun stuff, kids. Cool. Oh, let's not knock over the toys. So since we're looking at uh, Ghostbusters today, I hear there's going to be a uh, new new set of Ghostbusters movies. Yeah, well, here you have um, Peter Bankman. And with the new Ghostbusters movies, the thing is, Bill Murray, who played... Peter, um, never really wanted there to be a Ghostbusters 3 because he, I guess he always felt like, you know, there was the first movie, which was good, and then, then they did the second movie, and if, even though a lot of people remember the second movie fondly now, the second movie 
wasn't really the biggest success when it came out, so I guess he was never really too thrilled on doing a third Ghostbusters movie. But um, now they're finally doing it. Uh, even though um, Harold Ramis is, is dead, they're going to make another Ghostbusters movie. So an, an announcement came out, and it said, we're going to make a new Ghostbusters movie, but it's going to be all women. And when I heard that, I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting take on it. Might be, might be pretty cool. Might be funny. Um, I always thought it might be funny if they got, uh, for one of the Ghostbusters, I always wanted them to get Betty White. I thought she'd make a good Ghostbuster. But, um, next thing I heard after that was that not only are they going to make an all-female Ghostbusters, but now I hear of recently they're going to make an all-male Ghostbusters, which is interesting because, um, well, you see these guys here? Aren't these the male Ghostbusters? So there's going to be a female Ghostbusters, and now there's a male Ghostbusters? I don't know. I don't understand it. And th to be honest with you, I don't really care, because these guys right here, these were the Ghostbusters, and that's all you need. <laughs>